Right, we've got an interesting job today. We are going to be paving inside a house, <laughs> uh, an extension, which is being done. It's going to be an office. So the client's got all the flags there. So we're just going to turn up and lead them. And it's raining. So what better day to do it? So let's go and have a look, eh? Right, okay. What we're doing here is paving this area. So as you can see, there's a concrete screen already in. And we're going to be starting down there at that end against the house because that's the most logical place to start with a full flag. And all the flags are out there, just have a look. They're already stacked up there, so we've got four sizes, so we're going to sort them into order. So we've got, can't see what we're working with at the moment. So we're going to sort them into order, stack them here, and then work. <laughs> From here, from there, back this way. So in here, we've got a little utility. Right. WC there, and then this way. Got to tie into this floor as well. From that point, so that's where we're going to be taking our level from here. That's the existing floor next door. We're just going to whiz this door off. So we've got no obstructions when we're paving. And we won't make a mess of it as well. Right, so for this and every flagging job we do, we're going to be doing a 5 to 1 with grit sand, with all sharp sand to cement. And then we always add, because we like to lay on a wet mix, we always add plasticizer. So I'm going to be putting concentrated this. This is what I find the best for the speaker. So we'll just pop more measure of that in. Put the water in there. So we're going to be doing in ratios five to one. So I've got a buffer of cement there, so I'll put that in first and then I'll be adding the sand. Always stand back when you're putting the cement in. You don't want to be breathing that in or put a mask on. So it's, in, it's important when you're mixing to make sure there's no lumps or anything stuck on the side because when you tip it out it's not going to be mixed properly so you're going to end up with lumpy and inconsistent mix so you can check as you go it doesn't have to be all mixed when you're putting the sand in but you need to step to check it's not stuck on the back so sometimes you've got to stop and get the scrape off the fins or off the back where having a clean mixer helps. So that's done now. You can see there's nothing stuck on the bins or the back of the bins, so I didn't make it properly. It's like a stodgy, it's wet mix, but it's stodgy. That's probably a little bit wetter than what we'd normally lay on, only because the bed in here is going is very thin. It's only like about 15, 20 mil, as opposed to normally you'd be laying on about 30 to 40. So if I'm a little bit wetter with that, that's perfect for what we want. Right, we're going to be using this pro prime to prime the backs of the flags and also the floor as we go so everything bonds together well so we're going to knock that up now some water in there do quite a big mix does this stuff will last all day Half a bag. See in the wish now. Thank you. 
just dry closing this out and I tell you what, it doesn't happen like that much, does it? It's gonna fit perfectly. Eight foot. We've got the skates to go on as well there and the plasterboard, so no problem there. So nice and straightforward really. Just need to find our height off that floor through now to here. I'm gonna start with the thickest flag on this side because I know if I can get the thickest one down, all the rest will go down as well. But if you start with the thinner one and then you start getting onto thicker ones when you're down here, you're in trouble. I've sorted all these out now anyway. So we've got 3 by 2 600 by 900 2 by 2 600 600 2 by 1s, 600, 300, and 1 by 1s, 300, 300. And we've got near enough equal quantities of these three sizes, larger sizes, and then a few less of them, 1 by 1s, which suits me perfectly because I don't like them. It's good to have a few, but I don't like really working them into the pattern. The fewer the better for me. Uh, so yeah, it's important to know what you're working with so as you're laying you're getting the ratios right and you don't end up like I said before with a lot of one size left over.
base here. But what I like to do with these joins here, I think that's long enough for this uh, for the size of the room, everything to, to proportion. So if you were outside doing it, I'd say you could get away with nine foot. Uh, but on this, we've got three, four, five, six. So I think that's enough there, otherwise it's going to look too much of a longer joint. So what I'll do is put a 1v1 in there and a 2v1 there, and then I'll be able to break this joint then. It's all down to like perspective and size is what I'm saying. Outside you could go longer, I think. Everyone's got their own way, but that's what I prefer to do. So I'll be breaking that joint there. You don't want anything to run too long. Right, last flag of the day. So we've laid everything apart from the cuts. So I'm just gonna put this this last one in now and then next week we're gonna come back next Saturday. We'll do the cuts and um, we'll grout up. But not some bad considering we started at like about ten. Probably gonna lay the first flag till eleven, but it's gone down and it looks great, which is the main thing. And Jacob's way, it's like a super. <laughs>
Elite Story. Valmeite. Cheio de canal. Handy little thing for cleaning the joint itself. Get a flat iron. Okay, so we're back on another day to do the cut and get it pointed. It's a nice sunny day. It's almost wanted to be raining when you're working indoors, but uh, gotta get it done anyway. So we've got cut here, uh, a few cuts behind me there, and then one in this doorway here going into the kitchen. So the boys are out here. Doing the mixes, we flip it around. Jacob's knocking up a bit of a mix there to, for the cuts. Kev just done semi dry mix for the pointing. So we've got a three to one here with plasticizer and SBR in, and you want it just. If you have it too wet, you're going to stain too dry and it's not going to set. So you want to be able to scrunch it in a ball and it forms a ball like that. That's how we like it. Right, we are all 
it's all cut in and pointed off. So finish this with a brick jointer to get a nice tooled finish. As you can see there, it's not the best now because it's damp around the edges, but I've got a nice tool finish on that there. See. So what I'm gonna do now, it's not essential, but I'm just gonna try and remove a bit of this minor staining which is on there. So I'm gonna use the wash boy and the sponge and wring as much water out as I can because you don't want any water going into the joints and just remove some of this slight staining around the edges. See, it's just taking that little bit of mortar that's on there off and not affecting the joints in any way. essential to do this because if this was outside the weather fish shower or bit of rain on people walking on it's gonna wear off it's only a haze but it doesn't do any harm right folks that's it all done all pointed off clean down tools are away job done made up with it all i can say is i wish every job was like that <laughs> indoors no stress with the weather but yeah no one changed for the wheels being a paver landscaper is the best so i was gonna do i'll do a separate video and go into more detail on the pointing method that we've used on this it's a traditional sand and cement method and that's what we've always done for years because as as you know a lot of paving was indian stone or grey 2 b 2s years ago and that's all we laid so this was how we used to point all the time so we've got a pretty good method for it so i'm going to do a video on that and probably other jointing methods as well a full video on that so look out for that when i get a minute but yeah thanks for watching take care people